I am Sergio Pavlos, I'm director of Klaus, and I'm here today with uh, production designers on the film. Their full names will be displayed <laughs> right here. <laughs> so you guys were probably the first ones to join the film. I started with the pitch book along with Pascal Campion. It's a project I think has potential. I need help putting a pitch together while I'm writing the treatment, and um, rarely do I have the full treatment and I say let's illustrate. No, usually it's better to develop visually and then I get to see what you guys do and I go, oh, that's great and it opens up possibilities and uh, so it seems like you're kind of planting like the columns that support the, the construction, right? And then it's easier to fill in the blanks. Watching the illustration is like listening to music. It can, you know, tune you into the story. And this was a massive pitch book, by the way. <laughs> well, like 200 pages or something? Yeah. It's like a novel. It took me a couple well, of days to well, read that. I remember showing the pitch book to potential friends and producers. And, and we think it's 2011. It's a cute little story. Makes a good coloring book. Right. Maybe a children's book. But I said, I don't think it's a movie. Some films are easy to pitch because you say, picture this and that. And you go, okay, I see that. You know, Think of the tone of this film. And they go, okay, I get it. But every now and then you have a film that you realize is going to take a lot of work to convey the vision. When I gave the pitch to producers, it took me 45 minutes like to get through the whole thing. You're supposed to take only 10 minutes. Then next time um, he brought to me Klaus it was at Annecy 2015. And I said, oh my God, we have a movie. The obvious influence was David Earle, uh, art, his backgrounds and, and, and paintings, the graphic quality, the simplicity and, you know, the, the message that co goes with, with that. The mindset at least that I adopted was to, to try to create images that would look like the actual movie. We, we understand Sergio's requirement and his, his style. Somehow he likes what we, <laughs> what we do. If you look at the teaser now, those backgrounds do not look like they will fit into the film anymore. The general rules are more or less there, but there was no protocol. Uh -huh. Like we didn't say, okay, we are doing this like that. We're doing this kind of like that, right. but in this other background, we're doing it similar, but it's not the same yeah. thing. Very often we're using, you know, the, the frames from the teaser to show how not to do. I see elements. Style guide is, you know, what to do, but also what not to do. <laughs> and this is the, you know, one of the pages where we really want to show, emphasize what's wrong. <laughs> Never do that, it will be punished. Before it was just random shots put all together and we could do whatever. And now we have to tell the story, keep consistency. We were so afraid that we wouldn't be able to uh, maintain the, the quality of the look. I think for the teaser we kind of set a certain tone yeah. for it, but then the design team yeah. that we had yeah. here really, really helped because of course we didn't design the whole movie in all no, the locations, no, 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 no. We had a team of, yeah. of amazing artists that were helping us and they contributed yeah. a lot. Can you go into a feedback folder? In your folder? Imagine that someone cleared out the, the road and all the extra snow was pushed and, and it created a wall. Because we have basically like three main locations yeah. in the movie. Uh, one is for the for the beginning of the movie, which is the, the, the Postmasters Academy, the mm -hmm. big city. And then we move on to Smirensburg. And then the third major location is basically Klaus's house and, and workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, and each one of those locations happens in a different moment uh, for Jasper, basically. It's been nine months. Actually, nine months and six days, but who's counting? Shall we take account of your progress, then? His father is very strict and very proper, mm, uh, so we tried to reflect that with the, with the shape language, with, yeah. with using a lot of verticals, a lot of repetitions, a lot of... It's all about discipline. Order. Yeah, it's like a military academy, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and we used windows to give it the order. So you have the, the same rectangular shapes, you have the repetition and the light that goes through them. Plus the big table still in the same form. Opposed to that, 
there's the there's the tent which is really loose and lazy stop don't tell me let me try to guess I give up who are you so then from that location we move to Smirensburg there she is Smirensburg some of the first briefings that we got from Serbia about uh, Smirensburg the, the the town where Jesper ends up uh, was that it's supposed to feel a little bit like a western yeah. town, like like a town from a western movie, Wild West. But then it's supposed to be Scandinavia and, and you have snow and completely different mm -hmm. world really. So trying to actually merge that was a really huge help to, to, to kind of try to find the look at how the buildings look like from this, mm, from this part of the world and from this time and the snow and everything and, and think how you can use those elements mm -hmm. to create a feeling of a, of a western town. It's basically when you look at those houses you see a lot of triangular shapes because mm -hmm. of the roofs. Since triangles have sharp corners, they feel very aggressive. <gasps> the, the artist gets an understanding. It's not, it's not only we, that we tell him, hey, do it like this, but we're also trying to tell him why. The example of stylization and distillation. So we, took this concept of like detached box, you know, in the middle of nowhere, and we started playing with, with the proportions, with the angles. To support the feeling that it's very unstable, we, we are also using stilts that just support the house, but the stilts are very fragile. So you feel like this house could break any moment. This is a symbol of how Jasper feels really in that location. So there's nothing to, there's no stability. It's very hostile, it's mm -hmm. very unpleasant to him. Yeah. Uh, and it's very hard for him to find his place in there. The basic rock would look like this and then the snow the shapes of the snow are something like this. You again have those kind of pointy shapes of the snow and you can, you can exaggerate them, you can, you can make them a bit longer, a bit more aggressive, but then you still have a lot of curves in it. So once, when you go to the moment of the story, when the town changes, when Jesper changes and the world looks much better for him, you can still use those same elements and just make them slightly less aggressive mm -hmm. and they're going to feel actually cozy. appealing, cozy. Yeah, that's the fun part of it. Like you, can, you have the same elements, they almost look the same, change them slightly, synchronize them in a way to give you, you know, different, a different, different feeling, feeling Some, yeah. so, sometimes even opposite. We are really synchronized in that we like similar things, um, we have the same feelings. After 15 minutes I just I, I, I have to do something, I have to go somewhere. Uh, super stressful. Can you, can you review my stuff? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Margin is a bit more kind of narrative. Oriented, like, like for him, the, the narrative, the feeling, yeah, the, the light, the mood the are, are yeah, yeah. the most important in a sense, and then storytelling through that. Mm -hmm. And I have a bit more of an architect mindset, so I like kind of creating logical mm -hmm. patterns, Construction, systems, constructions. Shapes. Respect also for, I, I really love you know, his work. And if he, if he has some strong opinion for something, you know, I completely trust him, and I think it works the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go for lunch.